Hey, what's up guys? Sean here, living the corporate pilot life. I got a lot of positive response from you guys last week on the uh, technical video number one, starting the APU. So we're gonna continue on with week two now, to show you guys how to do the uh, FMS performance and navigation information. This has been a uh, highly requested uh, video, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. FMS is short for Flight Management System. Uh, it has several components to it. Uh, what we're going to show today is how to load the flight plan into the FMS and get the performance data pulled out of it uh, that we need to take off. This is what we do on a regular basis every time we take off and fly. Uh, obviously, we can't go through every detail of the FMS. We'd be here for a week going through everything, but we'll give you a quick rundown on what it looks like and how to use it. This is what our FMS screen looks like when we first start the airplane up. This is our nav ident page. It's giving us the, uh, the basic information that the FMS has. Obviously, we have our date, UTC time. That's coming out of the uh, satellite system. We've got our uh, nav database down here, and we also have the active database. And it is green, so that's good. Orange means it is out of date. So uh, we're between the days of January 4th and January 31st of 18. So we're green. We will continue forward. Pretty much everything is going to be done on the uh, bottom right corner down here to, to move forward through this process. So we're going to move on to the position init page. This is our position init page. We want to make sure that our IRSs are initialized. So we're typically going to use the GPS uh, one position. We could use the uh, last position where we airplane, the airplane stopped or the reference point for the airport that we're at. We're just going to use GPS position one. Again, we'll go to the bottom right here. Flight plan is our next page. So we are in Salt Lake City right now, and uh, we're going to be using an old flight plan to Bozeman, Montana. This is a flight that we did the other day. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video as well. The next step is to go ahead and load our flight plan into the FMS. So we're going to use the, uh, the flight plan that we used the other day. Since it's old, we'll just continue using that as a mock-up. We're going to say that we're going to depart off of runway 35. This is uh, two pages of all the runways here in uh, Salt Lake City. We're going to pick runway 35, and the ensign 5 is the departure that we did, and we're going to load that one up. <coughs> Off the ensign 5, we did the Holter transition, so we'll use that, and we'll activate it. So there's the uh, departure procedure all loaded up, all of the points, and it ends in Holter. So we'll continue building our flight plan off of that. We go to Bridger. After Bridger, we go to the Bozeman VOR, which is BZN. It's got two different BZN uh, VORs somewhere in the world, one in USA, one in the UK. Obviously, we're gonna use the one here in the US. That's our point. And then we're going to close out the flight plan. You always want to have your destination as the last fix. So there's our flight plan. The next step is to move forward with the performance information. Again, bottom right corner. This is our performance database. It's all correct. We have five pages to go through, so we want to check each and every one of them. Climbing, we're going to climb out at 300 knots or Mach 77. Cruise, 300 or Mach decimal 80. Descent, 300, Mach decimal 80 also. We're not going to use a step increment. Fuel reserve, we want to have 45 minutes. That looks good. Next page. We have a transition altitude of 18,000 feet. That's normal. And the speed altitude limitation of 250 knots below 10,000 feet. Initial cruise altitude for today, we're going to do flight level 370. And at flight level 370, we can expect winds of 324 at 42 knots. So we'll load that in there. Notice this went dash, so we need to fill that. That is at flight level 370. ISA deviation, we're going to leave that as zero. We have a basic operating weight of 43,500 pounds. Fuel, we have 6,200 pounds on the airplane right now, but since we're just going to mock something up, we'll just make up a number. We'll say we'll have 12,000 pounds on board. We'll make up a number here for cargo, 250 pounds, and we'll say we have five people on board. There's our gross takeoff weight, 56,600 pounds. We'll move forward with the performance information.
Okay, after it does a little bit of thinking, it tells us that for our flight, it's gonna take us 50 minutes to get there and 5,900 pounds of fuel is required. That does include the uh, reserve fuel, so it turns out 6,300 that we have on the airplane right now would get the job done. We're gonna move forward to the takeoff and it page. Like I said, we're gonna take off runway 35. It's 9,597 feet long. It's telling us the outside air temperature is three degrees right now, which is nice and chilly. That is an accurate number. The winds, we'll just make something up. We'll say it's wind of uh, zero, zero. Our pressure, altitude, everything matches up. Elevation is 4,224 feet. Again, we got four pages. We're gonna go through each of those to check the information. Slope is zero on this runway. There's no clear way, no stop way. Distance, uh, obstacles, elevation is uh, none. We'll move forward from there. Any skid is already on. The spoilers will be operative, but they're not yet. That's why it's, uh, it's inverse video. Flaps will be 20 also. They're not yet, they will be. NEI system is off. We shouldn't need any NEIs today. It's a nice clear day. And thrust, we're gonna leave it as rated uh, power. We could flex the power and reduce it a little bit. This can save a little bit of fuel. It also saves uh, wear and tear on the engines. We'll just say for today, we're gonna go full power. Again, there's our takeoff weight, 56.6. We're on page 404, that's the last one, so we'll move on to the takeoff data page. So it's telling us that our EPR for today will be 1.75. This is our takeoff information. 3,527 feet is what we need to accelerate go. 4,366 is required to accelerate stop. And the uh, length requirement is the highest of those numbers. It just jumped up a little bit. 9,597 available. And finally, here's our V speeds. V1, VR, V2, VFS, VSE, VR. Those are all the speeds required for our takeoff. Typically, we adjust the V1 so that it's not exactly the same as our VR. We don't have to, we like to just a little bit. So we'll say we'll make it uh, 122 instead of 126. That's gonna change our accelerate go and accelerate stop distance slightly. It's gonna bring them closer together. So it's even more margin on the uh, runway length available. Now we can continue on with the climb information. However, there's not anything that needs to be done at that point. So at this point, we're just gonna continue on to the flight plan page. And now we're ready to go fly. There's obviously a great deal of information that the FMS has that uh, we can't go into at this point. But just to give you a real quick rundown, Performance button here gives us all of our performance index. We can get to all of our performance information from here. The nav index, same thing, gives us all of our navigational information that we can get to if we needed to during the flight. These two buttons are the previous and next page buttons. Obviously they have several pages. Sometimes you have to scroll to get to the right item. Flight plan is what we've been working out of. This is our entire flight plan for today's flight. Progress button is one we use quite a bit. This gives us our progress for each leg. This is gonna be our next point, how long it takes to get there, how far it is, and the fuel that uh, we'll have on board once we get there. This is the one we really like to see, the destination one. To Bozeman, it's a distance of 313 miles, 50 minutes, and we'll have 8,400 pounds of fuel once we, uh, once we arrive. We like to see that number going down towards zero. That means we're getting close. And then the last button here on this line is the direct to button. If you hit direct, it allows us to go direct to any point in our flight plan. If we need to take a little shortcut, we like shortcuts. So guys, that's the basics of how you load the flight plan and performance information into the FMS. Hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me the like button, leave us some comments below, ask us some questions. We love to see the questions. We try and get back to you as soon as possible when we see those. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you guys on the next one. Keep living the corporate pilot life.